you can see the grass here is full of wild flowers and seed heads. This is these would be burnet, probably growing in the grass, and many wild flowers. No thought of putting on herbicides to get rid of the weeds and produce pure grass like the farmers do now. This was natural grassland being cut with twin horses and a man sitting on the mowing machine. This was June in Langdale. They would have clover, they'd probably have white clover, red clover, they'd have buttercups. I don't know the rest of them. They would be the normal wild flowers that you would get in a hay meadow that hadn't been treated with herbicides and fertiliser, as you can still find now in various parts. They are cutting grass with a scythe and that photograph was taken at the last week of October and uh, they were cutting grass in October because it had been one of the wettest summers ever known and the grass that they were cutting here for hay had been laid, as the expression was, by the wind and the rain and they couldn't use a machine to cut it. They had a mowing machine which they would normally use, but here the two of them and they're cutting grass with the long handled scythe. This is John Grisdale of Bayes Brown. He's in the field, he's sharpening the scythe, and in his right hand is the strickle. It's to sharpen the blade of the scythe. Cutting grass with a scythe was very arduous and unless you had a blade like a razor it was an extremely difficult task. It's a strong picture of a countryman of the 1950s I would think, somewhere there. John Grisdale of Bayes Brown. They're ploughing a field called Backerbeck. The Langdale Pikes are the background and uh, they would grow turnips for the, f for the animals in winter but in, in general it was grassland only and uh, they didn't plough and re-sow as is common nowadays but it wasn't one of his best fields for hay grass so he would plough occasionally his ploughing beside the heaps of manure they would be spread by hand he wouldn't have been buying in fertiliser no it would have been Far too expensive, farmyard manure was plentiful, but uh, bad stuff as they call it, the fertiliser, fizens or fizens as they all used to term it, fizens was very rare, too expensive. The hay was vital to them to feed the animals in winter, if they had cattle they would have to feed them in winter with hay in the chippens in the bar in the farm buildings and they would have to feed their sheep with hay almost certainly in severe winters because the sheep would often be brought down from the high mountains into the intake fields behind the farm and if the grass was hidden by snow for several weeks that's when the hay crop would have to be used yes hay, hay was vital it was there it, they produced this they didn't have to buy it in The river Langdale Beck through the village, through the valley, was full of brown trout. Everywhere you went you could see them. And they've fluctuated. There's been times since then when there's been nothing. Then they've returned and then they've disappeared again. I think at present we're in a period of disappearance. So what's happened to the trout in Langdale Beck? I don't know whether it's run off from the farms when they've started using bagged stuff as they term it, the artificial fertiliser, nitrogens, phosphates. Something has affected the river, one of the two or possibly both. My grandfather owned, he owned 14 houses plus this big piece of land 
and I would guess he had planted the large trees and there were big trees in 1930 so he may well have planted the larches. There were big trees two feet across at the base I should think going up into the sky seemingly forever when you're a little child looking up at them. Well my cousin John inherited it eventually and it was felled when I left Langdale to work in the 50s or 60s so these were mature trees that were felled for timber. And then John had the far-reaching vision that if he could get permission to build holiday chalets, he would have a good lucrative source of income. He eventually had 10 holiday chalets in the place where this woodland had been. He replanted, and lots of the trees he replanted now are 20, 30 feet high. The scars where the woodland was cut have gone the holiday chalets are hidden amongst the trees, so it wasn't a vandal occupation in any way. It was good economic usage. This is above a place called Pai How in Langdale, again with the Langdale Pikes in the distance. He's cutting bracken and I've captioned it a hard but necessary task where a farmer uses the scythe to clear the lower slopes of his fell pasture. So I think he would be trying to reclaim part of the intake and by constantly cutting bracken he would weaken it so much that some of it would die and better grass would come. This is in summer so he wasn't cutting the bracken for bedding for the animals as some of the farmers used to do. He's cutting this to clear a piece of land and produce better quality grazing, again using a scythe. Easter at Dungeon Gill and uh, Seven Tents, again in a field now that where camping is not permitted. We're looking across to the rock climbers crags of Gimmer Crag, high up on the left, and the bare mountain rock landscape behind, which is some of the favourite climbers' routes. Some of these <coughs> would be rock climbers, people who'd come to go on the Middle Fell Buttress, which is regarded almost as a beginner's climb. Raven Crag behind the uh, Dungeon Gill Hotel and Gimmer Crag on the skyline which these were the areas where some of the Everest climbers practiced their skills when they were younger. So if you went there now the only campsite there is the National Trust campsite at the other side of the valley. This one is the sheep gathering in the Mickledon Valley at the head of Landale. They're bringing in the flock of herdwicks. They're coming down from the head of Mickledon Valley where the sheep will have been grazing, perhaps on the sides of Bowfell, perhaps on the sides of the Landale Pikes. The part of the mountain in the background is called the Band, which is the approach to Bowfell in the distance and the top left hand corner shows the uh, crinkle crags. This is the kind of thing you could have seen any time, anywhere in the valley and in many of the valleys because the Herdwick was the sole income almost of the valley head farmers certainly. So there are about five farms at the head of Langdale all grazing their sheep on the adjacent mountain slopes. <laughs> 